was number disc number 11 I believe this is number 11 oh man I'm gonna have to look that up before I post this video aren't I did this uh this intro have anything to do with any of the games that were in it I doubt it. Tekken 3! Oh! Okay, so this is the one that had Tekken 3 in it. I did not... I did surprised to me. You know, Tekken... The original Tekken I never played. Or at least I didn't play at the time. Tekken 2 was a big deal, though. And Tekken 2... I don't know. It, it kind of, in a way, didn't look as good. But... In other ways it did. But Tekken 3 was... Was like a... Just so much better. Uh, I hate Eddie. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna fight. Round one. <laughs> now I guess the difficulty isn't gonna be ranked up too high in cranked up too high in a demo. So, I'm probably going to win this fight. You know, way this look this looks really good for a PlayStation 1 game. Now, I'm I'm not quite looking at the same thing you are because I have this thing being uh, rendered through an emulator, rendering it at a higher resolution than what it would originally have been. Cuz the PS1 mostly did like a 320 by 240 resolution. And I'm recording this at a fairly high resolution, but I'm going to re-encode it to like a 640 by 480, so it'll be lower resolution than when I'm recording here. But still, I mean, this game looks pretty good for a PlayStation 1 game. Eh, okay. Okay, I guess maybe I'll do one as Eddie. Capoeira's fighting. His moves are kind of weird and bizarre and kind of overly, overly, um... Oh, that was a quick fight, huh? Showy. Come on, Paul, I know you're better than that. Frame rate really drops down the crap during the replay. Look at that, the background is just a 2D plane. That's just uh, a 2D background that's just sort of panning around. Alright, let's get out of Tekken. Turbo Prop Racing. I remember this demo, although I never played the game itself. It's a boat racing game. Um. It was done by a Sony studio. Go! Oh boy. <laughs> I can see why this did not become one of Sony's big franchises. I mean, I guess with boat racing, you're going to have you're going to have kind of it's not going to control like a car racer even uh, an arcadey one or whatever because I mean racing in a boat is different because water isn't pavement seems weirdly floaty though I guess the game doesn't look bad for when it was released and what it was released on but it's not fun wonder if anybody in the world ever actually enjoyed this. <laughs> I must have played the demo a whole bunch of times, though. Because I don't think I would have remembered it otherwise. But, you know, being on the drip feed of PlayStation Magazine demos at the time, because games were expensive, you tended to play a lot of crap a lot. Play crap all the time, because what you have is crap. I do kind of like the idea that the... 
PlayStation has this kind of awkward texture mapping issues. Coming down to the fact that it doesn't use doesn't use floating point math to show the perspective, to adjust the perspective properly on texture coordinates and all that. Ordinarily that results in this kind of awkward texture warping, which makes it look like the walls are moving in some weird way. Normally that would be a bad thing, but I think actually for the the water the water texture, it kind of works in its favor because it sort of is a sort of free texture warping kind of thing where it you have to show the water waves and all that kind of stuff. Now you could, I guess, go and have an animated texture or you could have actual waves being generated or you could just set it up in such a way that the texture's um, tendency to actually warp around would be to your benefit. Although, playing at this higher resolution, it does look kind of weird still. Everybody left me long behind. I guess I gotta collect these little props that are just sitting in the middle of the waterway in order to speed up. I haven't tried any of the other buttons. Oh shit, there's a turbo button. Uh huh, yeah. Yeah, I have a turbo button I didn't know about. Maybe if I knew about that before, I wouldn't have lost so badly. It's kind of a weird thing that games were like this. And I mean that in the sense that um, you would build an entire game based on nothing but this kind of racing mechanic. Whereas something which is far more sophisticated and plays much better might be found in entirely encapsulated in another game like Grand Theft Auto. It has a lot of... A lot of little mini-games that, in a lot of ways, are better than what dedicated, standalone games were back when. Of course, it was sort of the early days of 3D game design and all that kind of stuff, and a lot of effort would have been required to make the PlayStation, or the N64, or the Sega Saturn, or whatever, what have you, even do something like this. Oh, at least I didn't run out of time. I screwed this game. You don't have to put as much effort into just making it work as you have to put into design ninja. This is a video. Ninja Shadow of Darkness. I've never played this game before. At least I don't think I have. Idos, huh? Core. Hmm, so it's before Idos and Core had our falling out. I think they had a falling out, didn't they? Over Tomb Raider? Um, so I see it's a realistic game. What? Oh shit, you know what? I did play this game before. Not obviously not on this demo disc, but I did play this game before. Maybe it's on a later demo disc. Maybe I'll uh Oh, kill a giant crab, huh? It's kind of like the old beat em ups like uh, Streets of Rage or the old Batman games or whatever. I guess this was sort of the evolution of that into the 32 bit era. Not something that I remember being especially popular in that time or in the years since. I guess there is kind of a revival of this. Like, there is a new Streets of Rage game, isn't there? It's a long video. Probably a lot of puzzles involved, too. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> Definitely only played a demo of this. I never owned this or rented it. Yeah, kill a dinosaur. 
and a harpy or whatever the hell that is. Oh, some kind of a demon. Man, he looks angry. Guess this is some kind of a boss battle. <laughs> kind of a dragon. Oh, they're fighting each other. <laughs> when did that say it was available? I should circle the date on my calendar. You know, I don't remember if that game was any good or not. The demo, at least. Oh, Metal Gear Solid! Oh, it's the video, though. <laughs> the demo isn't here. Oh. Alright. Now, I remember there being... The PlayStation Magazine had an issue that had Metal Gear Solid as a cover. And I remember over the next couple of months, there were... It's still in Japanese, there's no subtitles. <laughs> there were two issues where... Maybe this was probably the first one, because I remember it, huh? There were two videos that they had in two separate issues. Now, there was this one, which is a little underwhelming and doesn't really give me much of an impression of what the game is. And there was a second video that they had in a, this, in a later issue where it was much more action-packed and had more upbeat music. And then after that, they had an actual gameplay demo, which had the Japanese voice acting still intact, and hopefully I'll run into that in the future. But this one was kind of underwhelming. I remember seeing that when I was a kid and thinking, like, Wow, that was... Uh, oh, it is issue number 11. That was... Underwhelming. Boring. Duke Nukem, A Time to Kill, another video. Now, I did play... I never owned this game, although a friend of mine had it. A friend of mine loved this game. I thought it was alright. Although I didn't play it nearly as much as he did. Maybe he saw something in it that I didn't. There was a demo for it, though, and the demo was alright. Although I bet you it's trash nowadays. <laughs> These third-person shooters from the mid-90s just do not hold up well. Is he wearing a toga? Duke Nukem was definitely a product of the 90s as far as his attitude and his sense of humor and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to say it as the... I don't want to put it this way, but in a way, it's kind of like the game industry sort of grew up a little bit. And you had a character like Duke Nukem, which at the time would have seemed edgy. But nowadays, just comes across as kind of dorky. Sort of like that kid. Like, everybody knows this kid. Everybody knew this kid when they were, when they were like 8 or 10 or 12 or whatever, who runs around and uses kind of language that all the other kids didn't use, or dressed in a certain way, and that kid definitely thought he was the most badass motherfucker in the world, but turns out that little kid was a dork, and <laughs> I apologize if you were this kid. <laughs> That's the way Duke Nukem comes across to us. There's an alien up there, look at that shit. Lunar. It's, an R it's a JRPG. What, is there no video? Okay, there we go. I've never played this game before. Although it was something that a, a lot of my friends sort of suggested that I get. It was just something I never did. Never played it. Or it or any of its sequels or predecessors or whatever. <laughs> Work in progress. Yeah, we get it. Maybe I should get a hold of it for the sake of this channel. Because I'm definitely looking into games that I've never actually played before. There were a few that I've done for this channel that I played through 
sort of blind. Like, um, no, what was it? Chrono Trigger, I had never played before. Oh my god, is she gonna sing? Is this game voice acted? I guess, huh? PlayStation 1 didn't see a lot of voice acted games. And the ones that did, like, okay, yeah, there was Resident Evil and there was Metal Gear Solid, but JRPGs especially tend to have way too much dialogue to be something that gets voice acted. At least on a console that doesn't have the storage space, uh, storage space necessary to really pull that off properly. Wasn't until like the PS2 era that you started to see that. Are you gonna show any gameplay? It's clearly some kind of a cinematic that takes place during the game. An anime cinematic instead of like a CG cinematic, which was pretty popular at the time. Alright, well that was CG there. <laughs> Nobody wants to animate a uh, panning shot like that. Although clearly the character was still hand-drawn. You in space? <laughs> I do not remember this at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> it was something I probably watched once when I first got the disc. And I'm like, that was stupid. And then didn't go back to it. It doesn't give you a hint, so much as a hint of what this game is like. Other than you're in a pirate ship flying around in space. Luna, Silver Star Story Complete. Working Designs. 50 plus minutes of animation. If it's all like that, then no thank you. Oh, back to Tekken. Alright, that was everything. Eh, I guess I'll go and I'll check out some videos on YouTube or something to see what Lunar was like. But other than that, that was a kind of a little bit of an anemic disc. It was only two gameplay demos. Tekken 3, which is awesome, by the way. Turbo Prop Racing, which is not. Then you got videos. Ninja, I guess that game wouldn't turn out being alright. The video wasn't bad, but it was kind of long. Metal Gear Solid ended up being a fantastic game, but it was uh, not the best video here. Especially since they didn't translate the... Didn't translate what... Vulcan Raven was saying, so I would have just sat there and like, what the hell's happening here? Duke Nukem, I guess the game would have been all was all right, but eh, it wasn't a bad gameplay video. Then Lunar, which was I don't know what the hell that was. I don't score these things, do I? I don't remember doing that for any of the video. Let's say this is a two out of five because it does have uh, Tekken three. Tekken 3 is enough to get it a 2 out of 5.